Why, hello there, lovely one. So we are going to talk about standard deviation. Now, standard deviation is really easy if you understand what the formula is. So we're spending most of this video just looking at how to interpret that formula over there. I do have a set of questions that we can go through to try and plug in the values. The other thing that is really, really important that you know how to use is your calculator because these days your calculator will do pretty much all of it for you. However, we do need to know why it's important. So standard deviation talks about the amount of space between that the general public at least falls away from the mean. And this example of marks over here is actually really good. So when we calculate the mean, it's commonly referred to as the average. When we calculate it, we are, well, we're calculating the average. But what we do know is hardly ever pe people hardly ever get that exact mark. They get round about that mark, but maybe you've got one person who's got that. So standard deviation is talking about the average distance that mark will be away from there. So let's say there's an average class average of 62% in a class. And there's a standard deviation, let's say, of 4%. That means that the majority of people are falling somewhere between 58% and 66% in that period. And that would be called standard deviation. So if standard deviation is the standard difference from the mean, it implies that we need to figure out what the mean is in order to do that. Now remember we have this fancy little symbol called x bar and you'll see it is on the formula sheet as well, or information sheet. So step one is we do need to figure out what the mean is. Step two is also looking at the number of sets of data. So, so far we have identified that symbol and we've identified this symbol. The sigma sign, I like to just think of it as it means we add everything together. It just makes sense to say it like that. So sigma says we're adding a whole lot of stuff together. And then this x with a little i at the bottom represents the individual pieces of data. This will become a little bit more obvious when we do this question as to what I mean. So now we have talked about that x. And lastly, and this is quite interesting, this funny little thing over there does represent standard deviation. However, this formula is for variance and variance is standard deviation squared. So when you use this formula, you're figuring out what the value is of standard deviation squared, which is the same as variance. So if you want standard deviation, you've then got to square root um, your final answer. So the first question asks us to calculate the mean mark for the class. Well, I suppose let's read the question quickly. These are the results of the maths test for grade 11 class of 20 students. And then we've got a list. Like I said over here, we need to know what the mean is in order to calculate standard deviation. And you'll see that there have been two marks awarded to doing this. Now on your information sheet, you'll see a formula that looks like this. It is the formula to calculate the mean. At the top, you'll see the sigma sign, which basically means add all of the stuff and then at the bottom you've got your number of stuff to divide by and i have already done this on my calculator so that we can speed through to the next part which is complete the table and then use it to calculate the standard deviation of the marks so this is what we're going to do we've got all of the marks over here we're then going to take that mark um, and let's put this here quickly the marks obtained is that xi type thing. We're going to take that mark over there and we're going to subtract the mean from it to get this value over here. So I've done that and it's squeezed in this itsy bitsy little space, but let's talk about why we're doing it again. We're wanting to see the average distance away from the mean, which means we're taking each mark and we're subtracting the mean from it. So that means that this person over here was 15.55 um, marks below the mean of 67.55%. Um, and you'll see all of these numbers going down over here. Now, if we were to add all of these numbers, we would get an answer of zero because that is a distance away from the mean and um, 
yeah anyway so we can't do that we need the numbers to be positive and that's why we're going to do some magic with the squaring it also for other reasons but that's essentially why this step is so important so i am cheating a little bit now by using the answers from the textbook this is taken from um, mind the gap uh, it's freely available on the internet anyway so you'll see that all of these numbers have then been squared then we've got to find the sum of all of the numbers if we go back to the formula up at the top this is exactly what we've done so far we found the difference between each set of data and the mean then we've squared it and then we've added it all together now the question asked about or told us about 20 students so that n at the bottom is going to be equal to 20. so if we want to calculate the variance and here is the formula for variance so the first thing i'm going to do is replace that top bit with um, let's go with blue with the number that's at the bottom of this table so that's 4960 2 comma 9 and then the bottom the number of students how many was that it was 20. now you'll notice just now i said calculate the variance that's because this formula is there to calculate the variance if i wanted to calculate the standard deviation i would need to take the square root of whatever i have got over there 6 2 comma 9 divided by 2 and that would give, would me, give the me the standard, standard deviation. deviation and that is going to be 15 comma 75 rounded to two decimal places now remember that your calculator has a whole lot of buttons that does this for you um, and as a result questions like this in exams are generally for fewer marks however there's a growing trend to give questions that don't aren't able to be worked out on the calculator Here's an example of a question that can't be calculated using a calculator. It's taken from the IEB Maths Paper 2 from 2021. So the following set of 10 numbers are given where A is more than B, and they haven't given us any values. So the first question they ask is determine the mean in terms of A and B. And of course, we know the mean is when we add all of the stuff together, and then we divide by the number of stuff. I'm doing this in an unnecessarily long way because I'm wanting to show you the calculations behind it. So we've got five A's and five B's being added together. I'm just going to write it like that. Five A's and five B's divided by 10. And of course, you can take out a common factor so that we've got five times A plus B over 10, meaning our mean is A plus B divided by two. Before we get to the complicated part of the question, I do want to point out that this is question 12, meaning that there's some out of the box thinking that's required. Okay, it says determine the standard deviation in terms of A and B. Now we're given this formula on the information sheet and that gives us clues about what we've done. This is why it's so important to understand what it means. We have got 10 values it's a a a a a a then five a's and then five b's b forever in a day so those are our x i values our mean we know is a plus b divided by two so x bar so if we're wanting to calculate the difference so it's i minus x bar we're going to have to do this how many times? So a minus a plus b over 2. And um, we'll do it again and again. And then we've got b minus a plus b over 2. And again and again and again. So let's start by first putting those into um, <laughs> over a common denominator. So it's going to be 2a minus there we go, 2a minus a, we have a b, and it's divided by 2, which gives us a minus b over 2. And over here, the same thing is happening. 2b minus a minus b over 2, and that will give us b minus a over 2. 
So I'm sure you're wondering why we have a minus over there. It's because that negative over there applies to both the A and the B. So it becomes negative A and negative B. Now the next part of the formula asks us to square those values. So I'm going to move a little bit to the side and let's do that. A minus B over two and we're squaring it. And then we've got B minus A over two and we're squaring that. That's going to give us an answer of it's over four. And it's going to be A squared minus two AB plus B squared. And what's interesting is we get the same answer over here. A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. I have rearranged it already. If I'd multiplied it out first, I would have done B squared and A squared over there. But as you know, it doesn't make a difference. Now remember, we've got five of these that we need to add together. And five of those that we need to add together. So I'm going to move over a little. And we're going to write it as 5 times a squared minus 2ab plus b squared over 4 and then plus 5 and you know what this does feel pointless but I'm just showing you how I get there b squared sorry about the mess over 4 which means we've got 10 of them 10 a squared minus 2ab plus b squared and of course it's over 4 the formula says that we've got to divide by the total number of things there are. So I'm going to make that over there, divide by 10, and just move over for a little while. And put that doohickey over there, and that's equals to that over 10, which gives us the value of a squared minus 2ab plus b squared over 4. Now that gives us the variance. We still need to square root it if we want to find the standard deviation. So the standard deviation is going to be the square root of everything over 4. And I'm going to cheat a little. I know that that is the same as a minus b squared. So I'll put that there, a minus b squared, because it makes finding the answer a lot easier. Get an answer of a minus b over 2. Now the interesting piece of information is in the beginning they told us that a has a greater value than b and that is exactly why I put the a in front and the b behind because then I get a positive answer and standard deviation needs to be a positive answer. And that's it for me for now. Much love.